Welcome Welcome everybody to the Heroes Era. This is our Halloween edition and uh, we've got a lot going on in game but we're going to sneak in a little bit of Halloween themed action here tonight. So um, Very cool. After last session uh, I think you guys leveled up to level 8 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah we did. Yes sir. Uh, sure. Um, and last session was again a pretty momentous, monumental, another word session. And, I got uh, I got the impression when I re listened to that you were hoping that we were going to die. I don't think it was hoping. <laughs> I think it was more so. Or the expecting. Opposite. Sorry. Uh, Maybe expecting, not hoping. Expecting. You guys decided to go fight another white dragon without Silverado. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. not what I expected. So. I guess they don't need me anymore. I guess I'm just useless. I don't know. Ironically, we were trying guy, to. A... I, I did somewhat expect it. <laughs> I thought I thought Vincent was dead for sure. Oh, yeah. As soon as that dragon showed up, I was like, "Well, this was fun." <laughs> Maybe I'm overconfident because I felt like we had it the whole time. I was like, "We got this." You didn't lose any health though. You like you maybe really? got hit once. Yeah. I don't I got smoked you... by a breath wagon weapon twice. We talking about the yeah, I don't that. remember. I remember you having high health at the end of that. Well, he he had that that uh, scroll of resistance. So he yeah, that's cold resistance he was fine. That's he why. was completely okay. Yeah. I think I think round one I was about half. I think I was down to like twenty nine. And then he she pissed off a little bit, so I healed up a bit, and then she came back and hit it. Actually, hit me a couple times. But then I saved and had like you said had the the resistance. I think I actually took eight hit points from her breath weapon the second time. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, the first dragon killed Silverado outright, and they all decided, okay, we need to figure out how to save Silverado's life. And then, understandably, you retrieve the stone, which was going to be the means to do that. And then you're like, let's go kill that other dragon, though, first. And then, uh, (laughs) then it was never check out the stone. (laughs) It wasn't really, it wasn't really. We were plan, trying right? to avoid. Chris? Yeah, no, we yeah. were trying to avoid the because the whole thing was we didn't want to go into the oh, stone yes. in the dragon's lair. Yeah, because then what if we pop out and she's just sitting there and we had no That's idea it. what condition we would come out of that stone in. Fair last exactly. time we last time we dragged ourselves out, <laughs> you know, barely That's made it. it. And so you know, in all fairness, you we were, were trying, trying to, to be just smart. Get out, of, get out of dodge there and find a yeah. safe place. To... We were trying trying to find a place, place safe place to go into the stone. Yeah. No, then, when we well, try to sell, kinda... when we try to sell without <laughs> Silverado and his past without a trace, it apparently apparently Vincent and Eric are loud as hell. Doesn't matter how invisible you are, <laughs> they can't see me. Matter. They can hear me. Let me take care of that. <sighs> and that then, was the best um, Vincent had <laughs> like communed with his evil patron, and uh, I thought we had made a deal. <laughs> <laughs> so that just was like a huge swerve. I thought that we had to. Both Chris and Vincent, that was a total audible. <laughs> In yeah, the last, last minute, uh, something Eric said just got to you. Yeah, literally. Literally was. Yeah. He said something about us being friends. And I was like, hey, I know a guy that worships the god of friendship. Oh, a guy. Nice. <laughs> so I, I always, I always re listen to our show. Sorry for people to listen. I always re listen to our shows and pull out like some random gems audio gems and there was there was a moment where i think uh eric and vincent are are trying to stealth and just horrible (laughs) i think i said i said to i said i said to to ben ben do we know do we know that we're doing this horribly yes (laughs) straight up yeah it was was obvious you suck and you know it (laughs) well yeah as soon as you guys started making all that noise too that's when the other white dragon disappeared yeah yeah you knew anyways, we were being so, you know, But at least this time we saw her coming. That's it. Because yeah. Silverado had died That's so a plus. fast because of that, that surprise round. Yeah, and uh, well, That's you guys did take out the dragon. And then um, you had killed both of the daughter dragons. And then the time came, you know, that you had found safety at that point. You thought, well, That's let's right. go back to that dragon's lair, That's essentially. It. Because one yep. thing we did notice is that there was dragons here, but there's nothing else. Like obviously, everybody knew not to come in. Anything else in the area knew not to come in here, so it was a pretty safe place. Wow. Yeah, everything else that had lived was dead in the uh, 
the two. Uh, you know, that killing floor of the uh, dragon's lair. That's right. The shoot. Yeah. And uh, yeah, 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 the pile of bones that we landed in. After <laughs> afterwards of fighting alongside a god against a god, and bringing me back, we got out of that sphere as soon as we could after. I don't know what we were, what we were talking about. Like there was some reason we didn't leave immediately, but I don't remember what it was. Oh yeah, Vincent was telling us the truth, being honest and all that. Well, at first yeah. he, you know, when he went to the stone, he had a different intention, you know, or I mm-hmm. thought so. So. <laughs> oh no, he did. He did. He went in there with totally different intentions. And then last second, you called upon uh, Dunsmere to to uh, resurrect so cool. Silverado or to. Oh, so cool! Your gate, essentially. DM's so. jaw hits the floor. <laughs> it was not ready. Also, that, so. <laughs> but that being said, hats off to the dungeon master. Audible for, uh, for yeah. adapting and building a beautiful moment out of it. <clears throat> I liked. How I it mean, worked. that it was out better. I think. Oh, yeah, was I, it was great. I loved it. I loved it. But you know, Something I don't think I got sad. a chance to say so last week. But that was amazing, Ben. The way you took it and. Rolled with it like that. I like how Dizzy yeah, totally. like. Totally Dizzy was. was like, was hey, Silverado, fun. stop dying every time you see me, please. <laughs> That's right. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm never ready, he says. <laughs> well, anyways, I want to thank everybody who's hanging out with us tonight uh, for joining us for this game of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and tonight we're telling a story. We do not yet know how it will go. The players, the dungeon master, the dice, all of these will have a hand in how the game unfolds. This is the hero's era. Yes, it is. Dun, dun, dun. And um, we're working with a new production team today. So, you know, some of these, you know, usual yeah. spots, they don't have dialed in yet. <clears throat> um, but anyways, I was so we're, not letting, the, we're not letting the interns run the board again, are we? I told you that's a bad idea. I know we just need to train somebody up here. So that's kind of what we're doing, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, the, the people you hired, though, were a little gangly. They were... They move very erratically. I'm not sure I like it. Yeah, we'll have to uh, keep tabs on that. That's a little concerning. Um, I'd say so. <laughs> so, uh, again, tonight we have a Halloween edition, and let's begin by um, introducing the players. We can start with um, Eric. Hey, I'm Jason. I'm playing Eric. Uh, now, uh, level eight fighter cleric, level five fighter, level three cleric. Um, having a blast fighting dragons and taking names. Um, time to get rid of another chaos stone. And, uh, Vincent. And my name's Chris. I'm playing Vincent, a uh, level five warlock, level three uh, sorcerer, who is apparently still not decided which team he's playing for yet. <laughs> and uh, Silverado. Hi, it's me. So I'm, I'm Bodhi. I'm playing Silverado. Man who dies a lot. I actually died this time. I had a mental breakdown and uh, threatened Rolo unintentionally, and is trying to do better. <laughs> I forgot about that. Trying, trying to, trying to, trying to do better in the future. But who knows? Right on. Um, and um, I'm Raging Sensei. And again, this is the Heroes Era. Um, in this session we're going to pick up where we left off and that's in the dragon's lair and the night is going to pass or your time of rest will pass and so you'll come to consciousness and silverado i think you're hanging out with rollo um he had gone hanging to out do his a, own thing hanging out's a loose term right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you had to kind of a a solo moment there and uh rollo's off you know doing his thing L- you all do wake up and um now what do you do um eric had a had a thought in, in the night that uh as we're you know we're resting next to near these uh dragon corpses he was thinking that the head of one of these dragons might turn into a really cool helmet so uh, I'd like to behead one of these dragons and take it with me. Okay. 
<laughs> that can be done. Cool. That sounds awesome. <laughs> so you plan to know, this wear doesn't, this? Doesn't sound very. It doesn't sound very elegant. Uh, yeah, whether it's the whole <laughs> head or a skull, I don't know. I'll have to talk to my buddy uh, Picard and figure out how we're going to do this. But I like how I'm slowly converting Eric to be more. Um, what's the word? Obtuse in his scavenging. <laughs> uh, I'm opportunist, man. Like I, this is a, we just killed two dragons. He's like he's oh, looking yeah. over discussive, like, like oh, these that's are a, that's a good that's a good idea. Like if you want to, you want you want the world and around you know people to know not to mess with you, like you know, helmet made out of a dragon skull. I think that's a pretty sends a pretty good message. Yeah, yeah actually, speaking of which, uh, hey Eric, um, can you save me a tooth? Oh yeah, I've got I. Totally. I, I was just, uh, I wasn't by no means Horneth and I just wanted to make sure we didn't, uh, we didn't, I didn't know how quickly we'd have to leave. So yeah, okay. for sure. For sure. I'm also going to give Silverado a pouch with 550 gold pieces in it. Nice. It's your cut from what we, uh, what we got from the lair. I, I was dead the entire time. Yeah. But I mean, you know, you know, if not you, it might have been one of us, and then, you know? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I mean, you died in battle with the dragon whose lair this belonged to. So, you know, I mean, like... All right. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, I'll you, take you, it. We split it into thirds, so that's your third. That's it. Um, so I was like, that, sure, I mean, buddy. <laughs> I'll take it. So I've still got the uh, chaos stone back in um, sticking in a sack, not in my bag of holding because I'm just that's just probably not a good idea. Um, yeah, what do you guys want to do? You guys, <laughs> I won't do that. No, that, that would be silly. Uh, are we going? Are you guys ready to head back to Dunlops and figure out the next steps, or uh, did you guys have any more business out here you want to take care of? I think I think uh... where's Where's that dragon that killed me? It's... Oh, he's, he's up here. She's up here on the way out. Yeah. I'd like to pass on by just real quick. Sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I guess I guess we can make our way out. I don't think we got anything else to do here. Awesome. Yeah, so I'll uh, I'll yeah. put the other dragon's head, that one dragon's head in my uh my bag of holding with the rest of the artifacts that we have and Let's carry on, guys. Yeah. Rolo, are you around here? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yep. And you hear just hey, uh, some clinging of metal <laughs> as he's stuffing his satchel. Comes you weigh yourself. <laughs> you weigh yourself down with uh with with goodies yet? We're we're heading out. All right. Let's go. Uh, nice to see you up and about. Yep. Yeah. Nice to nice to be up and about. <laughs> then we were gone for three days, right? Roughly, yeah. Rolo. Yep. All right. Yeah, I was about to leave and, uh, I mean, get help, you know, but, jeez. Glad you're back. I wonder what yeah. happens if we, have you been in a chaos zone? Rolo? Rolo? Yeah, Rolo, have you been in a chaos zone yet? No, I, I don't, I don't think so, no. Vincent, All right. I'm sorry, out of out of game. I don't exactly remember. <laughs> I don't think no, he was Rolo has been called into the stone though. I had him. I had him summoned uh, last time, and when we went in, he uh, the spell didn't carry over, and I think I think I was out of components, so I couldn't recast it. Okay. Until we got until we got back out. Right. Okay. All right. Just so you know, Rolo, every time we go into one of these things. Time gets wonky. So How long it did he be, think it passed there? Oh, like a couple hours, maybe. Maybe one sec. No problem. You know, one day we could go into one of these stones for like 24 hours and come out like age three years. I don't know. I don't know. Time, time could be real wonky. So uh, we Flying up this shoot, huh? Are we gonna take the long way? Uh, 
Look, I don't know where I am right now. I I got no sense of direction, so it's up You're to Dragon's Lair, bro. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, right, isn't uh? Don't we head back the way we, this way, the back we came? Um, so, like uh, this way. I am on the wrong. Am I confused? Here, my apologies. No problem. So you're like, talking uh, about there's a, a spring at the back of is Seth's bath, or there's a tunnel straight ahead. So um, the 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 tunnel from Issa's bath that took us to that am amethyst room, which kind of circled back around to the to the top of the layer, right? That was that seven mile walk that we took. Right. We, that was, yeah. And then don't we head out back, kind of um, if you look at our map, going uh, down essentially. Yeah, that's the. Um... The chute that is about, uh, I think, 150, 200 feet deep. So you guys took the long route because you decided that Vincent might have a hard time climbing up that. Climbing up. <clears throat> straight up a rope that far, which is pretty reasonable. But, um, I mean, you guys might have other methods of getting up there. So. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's right. Um. I think you guys had uh, devised some kind of idea with an immovable rod. Maybe if you need to, like, take breaks or, I mean. Oh, like, sit on it in the middle know. of a. Yeah, I think so. You like. Uh, oh, this is getting tiring. Let me just. Whoosh, and then it's see. like a, uh, an ice chasm. So you could, like, carve out, mm. you know, places to stand. I don't know. <laughs> Weird. Well, it's it's a, a matter of uh, choosing either direction here. Oh no! Whoever rolled last just uh, left a big one. That was me playing with the with the three D dice. Uh, Getting those goodness. out of the way. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to? We can climb. Do you want to climb up or take the long walk around? <laughs> uh, whatever gets me to the dragon that killed me. I don't know the way because I wasn't there. Let's. I I think we should do the walk because that last right. time because the climb was a little bit too challenging for you. Yeah. Some of us. Yeah, for me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but I just like noticed a straight climb up like two hundred feet. It'd be pretty challenging for anybody, I imagine. Yeah, that's true. Of ice, right? He's on it. Yeah. Um yeah, we can take the walk around. Oh, I can't I'd be level nine. I get to do so much cool stuff when I'm level nine. <laughs> the, the possibilities open up. Stay alive long enough, my friend. We'll get there. And I try. So, so uh, we start walking, I guess. All right. Let's walk it. Yeah, we'll hoof it. All right. And um, Vincent, we have you on audio and not video, just as a heads up. Yeah, I know. I got to I gotta, I gotta swear my kid in my hands. <laughs> Sounds good, my friend. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, you guys are taking the long road, so to speak, and you journey through um, the the cave system and find your way out of Issa's lair um, after traveling again through the Amethyst lair into the main entrance. And, of course, there's that chute that um, you all had noticed the first time leading down. And um, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Can I scoop some uh, amethyst dust up? Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Oh yeah, I'd like to replenish my pouch because I think we used it to get get out of there. Yeah, get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys have like a jar or two, <clears throat> or like some satchels or something, I have bottles. I mean, <laughs> yeah, bottles I mean, of amethyst cool, powder. That, that might come in handy, you know, as mm -hmm. a magical component or whatever. I, I will put down bottle of amethyst. Dust? Yeah, nice. amethyst dust. Nice. All right. The uh, layer has been pretty well looted at this point. So you guys yeah. have searched pretty thoroughly through the main layer, the you know, the pool area, as well as the amethyst layer. So, but on your way out this time, this is your third or fourth time passing this uh, hole and 
you notice a um I want to make sure that I have it right here. I apologize. Let's see. <laughs> Sorry, pull up my notes here. Um, Marks? Would brewing alcohol still work in a bag of holding if it was a sealed container? I don't know. Hmm. Because I'm what thinking about it What's and I can't. I think holding? there's no. I think there's actually no air inside a bag of holding. It would have to so be the, sealed so the, then. So the if it's, if it's so sealed the, properly, though, yeah. No, because then the gases would expand and break the container or whatever. It's in shame. I can figure out how to make brewing work on the go. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry. I can't find the notes I'm looking for. Um, you find an item that is uh, responsible for the uh, illusion being cast on the ground. So it's, um, I believe it was a stone that can cast um, a false wall or something like that. I'm sorry. I'll have to look it up um, and then I'll get you guys the notes on that. But it's a, it'll be a magic item that you guys will find this time through as you've passed through here several times. Wow. Um, I never even you thought make to your look way at how that was to the, uh, the main cavern where you had slain the other dragon and then Silverado, what are you trying to do with this dragon, my friend? Oh, I'm sorry, you're you're muted there. Yeah, I am. Here, here you are. I hold out my hand uh, towards Eric, questioning, questioningly, while looking at his hammer, silently asking him for permission to take it. What are you doing now, man? Revenge. Okay, I'll I'll hand it to him this time, sure. All right. He's earned it. And I take the hammer. And I take what do I take? I take uh do I still have that cow bone from way long ago? No. Uh, no, it's not, it's not, it wasn't Kingston on him a cow bone for a long time. Was. Oh, well, I uh, take the hammer and I just whoosh, whoosh, right down on its front leg and uh, just uh, hand it back to uh, Eric. Cool. Okay. And I take one of my darts and I just right in the eye and just keep it there and I leave. <laughs> Savage. And then as we pass pass along, I'm gonna I'm gonna behead the other one and put its head in my bag of holding. You're looking at me wrongly as is by as I break a dragon's arm, but like, oh no, he can decapitate <laughs> a dragon just fine. I'm dead man. That's why I didn't smash the face and I was going to, but nice. I figured no, I think that's why I'll use, I'll use the other one anyway. It's all good. You notice that the claws have been uh, pulled from this dragon. Hmm. Interesting. Like its its paws are gone, or just the nails? Just the nails, like the nails? claws of the dragon. Yep. Nice. Okay. Interesting. Rollo, maybe. <laughs> hey, Rollo, did you? Uh... Rollo is just. <laughs> You snag yeah, I mean, out uh, some. Uh, yeah, uh, you guys want some? I mean, it's. I, I'm just making sure that it wasn't like somebody else snooping yeah, around. I'm making here. sure we're still alone, eh? Dragon's claws, yeah, yeah, yeah. guys. Things are valuable. No, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. No, I get you. I get you. Not every day you slay a dragon. Mm-hmm. 
like we did. Oh, no. All of us. <laughs> Lately, it seems like that's been every day. But <laughs> All right. I just want to go to a place that has a bed so I can sleep. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds very nice to me. I like that. Well, um, perhaps soon, but not yet. The Very ominous. The path before you is the water cavern, or um, the cave that is essentially formed around the Daughter's River that is um, flowing warmly and so has made a path through the ice along the shore here. And uh, you follow the river for... Um, some time here and you see the opening before you uh, perhaps you're nervous as you pass by the honeycombed labyrinth of ice where the uh, dragons had lunged out of before but there is no sign of them now and here you are the um, ice cavern opens to the Ruckachucky River which flows just as a trickle now uh, upstream is still frozen and uh, so you have a dried large riverbed before you and the port of the city which is uh, a market district uh, a district where refinery is done so there's large industrial buildings and then um, you know buildings that are dedicated to speci selling specific kinds of goods but as you come out of this um, glacial cave here, again, this is, you know, the, um, a glacial wall that you all are coming out of, that this um, river is flowing out of. And so the dried riverbed and the docks of the ports are before you. And um, you see a cave next to the prominent dock before you and um, a light flicker three times like a signal three times or like w being hit by wind three times mm. can you guys please make insight checks I'm trying to see if that's Dunlop trying to flag us down for whatever or Condrazole now that I think about it that'd be more his thing three. is this the way we came in yes uh, I don't know what I got. My thing's over done. Uh, 14 or 11. Sorry. I got 14. So our highest is a 14 and an 11. Um, it looks like a uh, series of flashes that are organized in a way to send some kind of signal, perhaps to you. And uh, yeah, just to clarify, this is the path that you had taken to get to it's that's mine. This is the uh, the the dock region of of uh, Dunlop's Tavern, the the larger city. So there's the dock area, then the slopes, and then the plateau where the actual tavern itself, and then the other market district is. All right. Well, I I looked at the other two guys and was like, I don't know. Do we signal? Do we try like to send a signal back, or we don't really have any like light? I mean, I got I got a thunderclap I can do that would get their attention. Who who else? Who knew we were coming here other than Dunlop? Uh, no one. Condrazul. I mean, Condrazul. It's possible he followed us. I wouldn't doubt it. Condrazul. Has never really had a problem finding us when he needs to in the past. Exactly. Oh. So I'm suspicious because Dunlop would just have walked right up and be like, "Hey, great job! You killed the you you got the thing. Good job, boys." Condrasol likes to do things a little secretively, so I feel like this is him. Oh, sure. <clears throat> hey, hey, uh, Rolo. Yeah, yeah. You wanna you wanna disappear and go check that out for us? Yeah, I'm there. All right, I'll uh, roll my eyes in the back of my head and put a hand on Eric's shoulder while I see through uh, Rollo. You feel another hand on yours. 
Rolo lifts into the it's air. It's comforting. As he, as he flies away, uh, now invisible, and you get the um, bird's eye view of the port district here, but more importantly, um, the cave next to the most prominent dock here. Uh, Rolo flies up closely, slowly, uh, very quietly. You can, however, hear his wings flapping just a little bit. And uh, as he peers into the cave from above, uh, he, you see uh, a dwarf. <clears throat> the dwarf has a, a small piece of metal uh, angling about, trying to direct light um, towards the three of you. Oh, I know what's going on. Uh, Rolo I... then uh, begins to fly back towards you. Do I recognize the dwarf? You don't. Um, he uh, is dressed in uh, like a military garb. However, I don't know that there is a, a unifying... Uh, like a uniform of uh, these of Dunlop's dwarves. Yeah. Um, if there were, I uh, I don't recall. So, does Vincent tell us this, or is he keeping yeah. it to himself? Yeah, no, I, I'll I'll tell you as I say. It's a dwarf. Don't recognize him. Looks like one of Dunlop's guys, though. I think he's trying to trying to like let us know that he's there, so we can get out of here. Because I don't think he knows that dragons are dead. Yeah. So maybe it will be funny if Eric walks out with either the dragon he, head underneath. Either his that arm. or he, either that or he watched the other the second dragon fly in, or he run out screaming, going, "Oh my god, dragons everywhere!" <laughs> run up to him like, "We gotta go." <laughs> I like come that with me if you want better. to live. <laughs> Eric holds his dragon head. We killed one. The other one's angry. We gotta leave. I, mean, I get minor illusion. A little roar behind us. We could do the whole. I'm down whole for thing. it. I'm ready. She's not mad. She's not happy that we took one of their heads. Yeah. Um, and where all right, are you all having your conversation? Or maybe we just walk out there. Maybe we'll just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just go check it out. I like that little play. All right. Yeah. I'll, uh, yeah. Hey, um, so describe to me where you all are having your conversation. So we're probably just at where did we where did we see this little flicker? Just at the mouth of uh, at the mouth of the the cave that we enter exit, and we see this. Someone's obviously watching for us to come come out. Yeah. Um, the cave is just along the shore, next to the docks. What are the chances that this is where they're going to build the uh, altar where we are to uh, deposit the late the this chaos stone? Is it possible that they're gonna they want to do that here? Is there something else? That, is there some other sort of uh, melting or cleansing that could happen similar to what we did when we, when we put the stone at Dunlop's tavern and that, that kind of melted the, um, a big chunk of ice, right? A big, a big That's area. That's a good question. What happens if you put two stones in one area? Does it just come double blessed? Psst. I, Psst. I think that aren't the, the, you hear a, the... A, a shouted whisper come across the riverbed. I keep talking to Vincent as if I don't hear it. I mean, it's a good question, isn't it, Vincent? Two stones, one area. Yeah, I mean, it's like a whole. I mean, you can have a whole thought thought experiment about that, like what happens to it. Yeah. Can would one go into the other? I guess not, because they'd have to be able to see, and a stone can't really. Yeah, but aren't they like the both it? like god like they're the same god though? You know, both Therizessa. Mm -hmm. So they become like a mecha god when you combine them. That's a good idea. Anyway, we should get this out of here. still trying to get our attention. We, yes, we anger this. Is. We gotta leave, Vincent. We anger this dragon pretty badly. Yeah, we better get out of here. So, oh, hey! <laughs> oh, I think spooky. somebody's whispering at us. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go see what this guy, what, whoever this is, is yeah, up to. Okay. Um, <laughs> as you approach, um, roll initiative, please. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna be weapons drawn. I figured. Oh, too late. Damn it! And I was like, ah, oh, this a little Ooh. sketchy. Oh man, nineteen. I got a big fat fifteen. Oh, I got a twenty. Ooh, I just didn't show up for a second. So I was like, ah, oh, so nothing. Somebody's closer. <laughs> 
as you all are uh, casually strolling across the riverbed uh. here discussing um, whatever joke you're going to play on this dwarf. Yo, hurry, he says uh, across the riverbed. Um, suddenly a chill takes you and uh, you see the fog raised from the ground and uh, the light that he's been sig- signaling you with disappears. Maybe we should have listened to that man. <laughs> Eric, yeah. you are first. Um, so what do I see? I, I know this. Uh... So I was not expecting things to unfold this way. But no. before you, essentially no what you have, us. imagine that you're in a dried riverbed and there's um, a dock big enough to, uh, you know, draw a large vessel up to and you know, move, remove goods, things for that sort. Um, okay. But there's like, nothing because there's no water, so it's all... Right, right. So right there's on. like a large warehouse behind it, but then to the side of this uh, dock and warehouse, uh, there's a, a cave from uh, wherein okay. this dwarf was signaling Signling. you guys. And as you guys are walking across the riverbed, the riverbed is probably uh, 150 feet wide, something like that. So perhaps you're 60 feet from uh from this cave now um and an unnatural chill has taken the air and a deathly not, we don't a deathly we don't silence. see any we don't see anything deathly maybe a deathly silence um oh, deathly. yes what i've described is really all you noticed so oh, far oh gosh man uh <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do um Sorry, let me look at my. Uh... It's daytime, right? Um, or is I, it? I was imagining it being still dark. Okay. Nighttime. All right. <sighs> I know what I'm doing on my turn. I don't know if it'll help, but I, I have no. I mean, because there's no no visible targets. Um. Do we really even know that we're in a fight yet? Do you? I feel like I I, I don't I don't. I don't feel like I'm in a fight. I'm so confused, guys. Long. Um, I'm just gonna draw my weapons and hold hold. Uh, I'm gonna hold a sacred flame. Yeah, I just uh, I just. Okay. Um. As you. Uh something uh, clues you in um, perhaps it is a strange chill that is taking the air you start to uh, see the form of uh, a person uh, beginning to um, coalesce from the mist that is growing on the ground mm. spookums uh, is the story is still my turn um, did you take your? You... No, I, I'm just holding an action. Yeah, so no, I, yeah, that will probably be my turn anyway. I don't, I don't know what's going on yet. That's I, fine. I'm, As yeah. this happens, um, <clears throat> the dwarf yells from the cave, "Run, you fools! It's ghosts! Run!" Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and Vincent get... um, or Eric, you can act if you like. It can still be your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I still don't to know. Confront the ghosts or move to run from. Absolutely no. I'm gonna basically whatever direction those goats are. Ghosts are. I'm gonna move thirty feet in diametrically opposite direction at least. Gosh, mm, I feel okay. I feel like so a deer in the headlights. Into the river cave. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, so you will just about face and begin running back across the uh, the riverbed back to whence you came from the uh, empty. Uh, river cavern there and vincent you're up well when you see the tank run you follow so (laughs) i'm going to uh also turn and 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 sort of or maybe not turn around but just like like backward step um you know just quick uh quick back up along with eric um I'm still not sure what's happening or what's going on. So um, I'll just say, um, 
I'm going, I'll, I'll just hold an Eldritch Blast in case anything comes at us in an aggressive manner. Okay. So you are following Eric and then also... You know, I'll follow Eric for my movement and then my, I'm going to hold my action for... Um, I got two shots of Eldritch Blast in case anything comes at us in, aggress- in, in, a, in an aggressive manner. Okay, sounds good. Silverado. I uh, yell out to the dwarf. Are you going to be okay? (laughs) (laughs) Um, The uh, dwarf makes no sound, but you uh, see his shadow move away, and uh, whatever light was within his cave is extinguished. Right. I pull out uh, my staff and I ready it. Actually, I'm a move with uh, the other two, backing up with them. I'm going to use a dodge action, which will make all attacks at disadvantage at me for... Uh, until the end of my next or until the start of my next turn and I'll just be backing up with them saying come on come on guys this is not fun this isn't funny I don't like this guys yeah not a not not a fan I I was almost these people I don't want to be these people get back I'll kill you I'll punch one of you, I swear. He can do it. I've seen it. I'll punch a ghost. And <clears throat> so as the three of you are retreating back to the uh, the the cave here that is formed over the Daughter's River, uh, the, what looks like um, a person, but obviously is, uh, I don't know what... How different would a ghost look from a, a person? I'm looking in the monster manual here. It looks like a person, but blue. <laughs> they just, they, I don't think, I think they hover. They don't touch the ground, right? Oh, well, uh, this figure actually leaps forth into the air. Um, and <clears throat> it is like a translucent, uh, light glowing blue. And it lunge, lunges forward through the air quickly. Pow, pow. Very good. Please roll your attack, Vincent. That's exactly the kind of thing I was holding it for. Uh, well, the first one's a natural one. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. The second How one many? is a 24. Thanks. Which I'm assuming hits a ghost? Hit, absolutely, yes. Okay. So it's uh, 12 force damage. Very good. Now is this... Uh, human shape takes form from the mist it's glowing and it's haunting form uh leaps into the air it shrieks and everybody please make a wisdom saving throw uh oh 21 who gets possessed let's find out i do oh no I got a what six. <laughs> Okay, so we have a 21 from Vincent, a 6 from Silverado, and an 11, 11. From, from Eric. Okay. And then, uh, Vincent and Silverado, can you do me a favor and go to your settings and enable 3D dice and automatically roll 3D dice? Because then it'll drop in oh. a, a fat dice uh, sound for me whenever you guys roll the dice. Hold on. Dice. It's like on the settings column. Enable 20. and automatically. Yeah, enable 3D dice and then automatically roll 3D dice. So then it'll throw out some dice on the table. Wow. Okay. So this is kind of an interesting um, situation here. But the uh, horrifying visage before you uh, is just terrifying utterly. Except to Vincent, perhaps because from time to time he takes on uh, his own demonic form. Yeah, this is nothing. (laughs) Um, (laughs) 
Sorry, my uh, text is fading in and out of sight here. Um, like so, a spooky ghost? You're going How many be, ghosts do we see? You're, there's just the one before you uh, that's seeming to uh, chase you down that is left into the air. And um, you're going to be frightened for one minute. And you can repeat this saving throw at the end of each of your turn. Okay. Um, and Let's then see. once you succeed, you'll be immune to this in the future. However, uh, Silverado, you feel something strange has happened. And perhaps you're more attuned to your own mortality because you feel as though you've just grown older. Um, you've been ho horrified in such a way that it is, a it is actually taking years off of your life. I'm an elf. I don't worry about that. <laughs> Yes, but hopefully it doesn't accrue to where you will worry. Spooky. So, uh, okay. <laughs> so mark yourself as uh, five years older now. Oh, <laughs> nothing in elf years. Oh, wait, I apologize. Actually, uh, I'm reading that wrong. Uh, so it that says you'll age a D4 times 10 years. Wow, okay. So will you roll Let's a see. D4? Yeah. I apologize. I read that. Let me roll my own fate. A four times four. I don't know it's 40 years. I don't know. Probably. Not really, no, but I mean, I'm technically. Come a... on now. That's like a fifth of your life. <sighs> elves, live to be like, elves live to be like 700 years old. Yeah. Basically, you wouldn't feel any different being that much <laughs> older. It's still, I mean, it's still, I like you said, it can, it can, it can add up. If I live long enough, I stop aging anyway because of monk stuff. I, I guess I'm like, way, like not as menacing if you don't even notice. <laughs> hey, if it was the well, best person that for it to happen to, it would be me. Forty years on, forty years on me or Eric would be uh, would be very noticeable. Horrible. So. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, nonetheless, uh, uh, you do mark uh, this change in uh, your own age somehow. And How so you might I? want to make note of this for any ghosts you fight in the future. Um, I was like 224, so I'm like 264 now. And Eric, you're up. And you are... I'm frightened, you are right? Frightened. Am I also frightened? So, yes. So while I'm frightened, so while I'm frightened I, anything anything I try and do to the, towards the ghost, I do it at disadvantage. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Um, I'm going to cast protection from evil on myself. Okay. What will that do for you? It, um, so where was it? Till the spell ends, one willing creature you touch is protected against certain types of creatures, aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, and undead. The protection grants several benefits. Creatures of those types have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target. Tar target also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. If the target is already charmed, frightened, or possessed by each of the creatures, the target has advantage on any new saving throws against the relevant effect. Alrighty. So it'll give me a, so it'll give me advantage to get uh, be un unfrightened and then have advantage on I think uh, and then immune to it in the future. Okay. So the ghost is gaining on you guys um, as you're moving across this riverbed here you can move again and then you'll be able to go into the tunnel um I'll, so at the, I'll, I'll i'll just kind of do i have to move or can i just stay put you don't you can absolutely stay put all right so i'll end my turn at that that, that point we ain't afraid and, of no uh, ghosts I, I try not to be um that's funny because that's what i was thinking that i should have done i was gonna do when you when you asked me and that I ran instead, I I should have done that in the first place. So I'll roll to see if I can get unfrightened. Is that all right? It's cool. Yes, please. It's okay. This is scary. Very scary. Very spooky. Oh my gosh! I suck at rolling. Sorry. I oh, no, we got that. seven. Seven and thirteen and three. Okay. And I'll stay here. I'm still frightened. Help us, Eldritch man. None of us can move. We're all we're all scared to the bones. <laughs> hmm. The I've I'm sure somebody out there knows, but the way that the wording on horrifying 
visage sounds to me it seems ambiguous as to whether every fail you make is um or every uh, failed save would aid you i don't think so it'd probably just be the first yeah i, I kind of read it as the first one yeah, that would be super deadly if otherwise yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so where i was like every time he fails to save he's like ah no <laughs> no where i was like it's fine by the end of the fight he's 640 years old <laughs> finally i am old um so, i'm sure some listeners that are that know the rules are yelling at them out that's right now they're like no you're yeah. dead now. you idiot <laughs> uh vincent you're up eric how old? i'm i'm sorry how old is eric that's a good question uh i guess like he's around 20 that's um you're like we need a head start here <laughs> no, no no i was just no, uh was teasing. starting around from <laughs> yeah first first level i think i said he was around 20 i think he left home when he was in his mid-teens makes sense okay and i'm sorry so go ahead vincent Vincent, who is nine, by the way, just if you're keeping track. <laughs> no, no, Vincent is is in his in his early twenties. Uh, he's probably like twenty three or twenty four. Um, but I just double checked. Azamar lives to be about one hundred and sixty years, so I might be able to handle one or two of those. Uh, <laughs> maybe I don't want to talk too much crap. Uh, I am going to. Ooh, I'm going to bust out one of my new. My new toys. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at this ghost. Okay. So they make... Oh, wait, no, I make a spell attack roll. I forgot to put this one on my thing. Shoot. got to fix that. Hiya. That's a natural 20. <laughs> oh, the worth bolt. the wait. Crit with the guiding bolt. So guiding bolt is 46 radiant damage, so that'll be 86. Oh no. My ghost. And the target and the next attack roll made against the target before the end of my next turn has advantage. Nice, very nice. Wow, that's a lot of dice. That is 29 points of damage, of radiant damage. Check in. <laughs> it is a ghost, but it could be a holy ghost. It's Eric's. Eric's. Uh, there is Essa trying to tell him something. Oh, we're, just, by it. we're just so on on edge that we just on the water. Just blasted back here uh, by your magic, but uh, still retains its form. Silverado, you're up. Okay, I have a question. Ask it. I have lightning strike, which isn't an attack roll, but a deck save for whoever I guide, whoever I shoot it towards. I'm frightened, which means every attack roll that I or attack that I make is at a disadvantage. So what happens? Oh, uh, good question. I don't know. I feel like it's, the save should be at advantage, but I don't know. There you go. Should it, should it not? Oh. I don't know. Yes, I will rule that it should, and then we can look it up. See, because I'm sure that spell will come into that, effect later. that's how you handle it with the dragon when the dragon was frightened we had a, we gave us advantage on a say on it's um on something i forget what it was but okay yeah yeah wow so am i making yeah. my save here for you to cast that spell Deck save. um well here's another question then all right if i'm frightened and it gets advantage from that but it's also hit by a guiding bolt would it be at normal then a normal deck save um, so this there, isn't an attack, right? If there are multiple instances of advantage or disadvantage, they just will cancel out. Okay, so if I use Lightning Bolt or Lightning Strike, it'll just be at a normal deck save for the ghost then. Okay, that sounds right. All right, well, well I'll do that then. Okay. So I'll I'll spin my my staff in fear, and I'll have Lightning arc through the fog 
around in a circle until it comes back to the tip of my spear where the heart is and goes straight forward towards him. Nice. Uh, tries to dart out of the way but cannot. That's 30 lightning damage. Uh, the ghost um, is, is illuminated by the lightning and then uh, disappears in mist. Ooh, yeah. Killing and my demons. As that happens uh, from the mouth of the cave, hurry now. More will be coming. All right, fair enough. No lolly gagging this time. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I dropped the ball there. Yeah, oh, I'll, I'll hoof it with these guys into the into the cave. Come along, Vincent. We must kill your friends. Oh, man. Are you going to turn tail and run? With the dwarf, yes. Okay. On the way out, can I just throw another Eldritch Blast? I put I put a guiding bolt on it. He has the advantage. Ghost, I don't the ghost has it. been dispatched. I'm sorry. Oh, it's done. The ghost, ghost was dispatched. Oh, dead yeah. ghost. Yep, and the dwarf sorry. is uh, beckoning or calling to you guys now. Will you heed his, his warning? Yeah. Presently, I'll I'll be ready to attack. I'll already uh, an attack action if he. You know, jumps out and gives me a spook, but <laughs> I'm cautious. So you um, hurry across the riverbed. Uh, the dwarf is beckoning you from the cavern. Yes, come on now. You know, that sounds really bad, right? Oh, and that man. tone of voice you're using. Oh, no, was it? <laughs> yes, come here. Don't be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill you. Vincent, Silverado, Eric. Oh, he knows our names. That's good. That's a good. That's a plus. Yes. Gosh. Yeah, yeah I'm going so in weapons. I, I'm weapons drawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do we know you? Uh, Are you a ghost? You don't know me. Dunlop said to send a snake if you came this way. Snake died. No, I have a snake, my friend. I'm. No. I've just sent one. It no, should this... be only a few minutes. We'll have an answer. Now the snake's dead. I, I watched it fall. I'm jo I can't see anything in this fog. I'm joking with you. My friend, I took care of the snake, I'm telling you. I just sent it <laughs> off. Right, whatever. Yes, well, my name is Woodruck. <laughs> and I know all of you. But well, um, Nice to meet you, Woodruck. Nice to meet you. Woodruck. Uh, Don Lop said that if you came this way... Uh, to please send word and have you wait. So, would you like to step into my office and make yourself comfortable? I have old Toby in the homebrew. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. You got any chairs in here? Or am I hanging up are my there, hammock? Are there normally ghosts flying around outside your office? Oh, gosh. Ghosts, no. Yes, well, have a seat here, Silverado. Make yourselves comfortable. He pats a big stuffed chair. Well, uh, you're wondering about the ghost. Let me start from the beginning or thereabouts. After you thawed the slope and port, by the grace of the mother, we continued working with and without the dragon to put our brothers and sisters to rest. But many of their bodies were lost in the flood. Uh, we are working on a monument to them to tether their souls to the community, to let them rest, for that is all we can do. But their souls have begun to wander. They wander the streets when the dragon leaves. Some of them haunt their old homes. Not to bother to anybody. Others are out for revenge on something they don't understand. These are our brothers and sisters. Would it uh, bring you comfort to know that both of the sisters are dead? The sisters? The sister dragons? Yes. Y yeah, I yes. wasn't... I, no, I was I was there for it. Yep. You have killed Vita in this <clears throat> Seth. Yep, all three of impressive. us. We sure did, and none of us died or anything. No, all was lived. And um, just to, just to prove, I'll kind of pull my bag of holding off my and just kind of bring the head, pull the head up out, and then put it back oh. in the bag. Very nice. Are you gonna make something my, with that? 
I have my hand on the tooth that I had that I was going to pull out to show him, and then he did that, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's that's better <laughs> uh, yeah i've got plans for that for the skull of of uh vita well a fine trophy um as you all are chatting with this dwarf briefly um he's offered you drink and a light snack he has some bread um the snake Ch returns carrying a, a sealed scroll case and um, the seal has the hammerhead uh, D's of Dunlop's insignia. And he hands the scroll case to Vincent. Why do you okay. get all the mail, Vincent? It's because I'm so smart charismatic. One. The rest yeah. of us can read, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm so charming. They just, I don't know. I mean, we, we all it's read good. The first he reads thought well. that comes to mind. It's like, let's give it to Vincent. It's, you know... I don't know, man. You think I want all the paperwork? I don't. Whatever. I don't know. And I open it, it up and start worry. reading it. And this will be in your handouts on roll twenty. There. Um, it's nice. called a note from Dunlop. I think you already have one of these notes, so it'll be the other one. A note it from Dunlop. My brothers. To electric boogaloo. Uh, it says, ah. "My brothers, so glad to hear of your return. The streets are haunted with the souls of our fallen brethren." Ask Wedrook to show you through the hot mines. You will find much safer passage below the streets, Dunlop. Wedrick, I have two questions for you. Uh, one, can you take us through the haunt, uh, through the um, the hot mines? And also, please tell me that that is not a sewer. A sewer? No, heavens. Okay. Uh, uh, the mines have been all but closed for several years. Now you just use them for a quick way to get about the city. But you almost said something there. I hope is a Freudian slip. Did you guys hear him say haunt mine? I mean, did anybody else hear that? It's, yeah, yeah. I that, that was not a, say that. Yeah, that's my mistake. That was my mistake. I, it slipped to the top. I'm going to be honest. With, Bad timing. That's all, you know. I'm going to be honest with all three of you. Being in the street sounds way better than being in mines underground with ghosts. My friend, now maybe, I told you yeah. the souls of our brethren wander the streets at night. All right, so this is like it. we're basically taking these. This mine will take us back to Dunlop's tavern. Is that what we're saying? I understand your concern. It does sound daunting. Perhaps we should wait here till morning. Mm, I mean, I don't know. It kind of seems like Dunlop wants us to get back. Here, I have an idea. Let's all hide in the orb and come out immediately and in three days would have passed and we'll be good the orb what yeah, is, what look. orb do you speak of a some kind of sleeping machine yeah basically yeah um i don't know i i mean I, you think we should wait <sighs> I mean, we just rested, but then we also just walked half a day. Yeah, I don't know if I can... I don't know if you guys can sleep for another eight hours immediately. That's some, that's some real lazy stuff going on. You wake up, you're awake for maybe 20 minutes, and you go back for another eight hours of sleep. Well, I'm I mean, happy that... to show you through the mines, but I need to get on my way here. I'm just on my route, I saw you coming out of the cave. All right, let's go through the mines. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can feel free to rest here if you want. I'll come back in the morning. But if we're going to go, we're going to need to leave now. What do you think, Vincent? You're okay? Um, you're pow power wise, you're feeling all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling okay. I mean, I know we spent a few hours trudging out of that place, but uh, yeah, let's go through the mines now. I would like to be possessed later. Not at all. I give myself some time, you know, from, from what yeah. happened before. You want to take a break, Silverado? <laughs> no. Are you sure? We can. Yes, I'm sure. I take one of the bottles that was offered and I just um, take, a, take a big drink. And I put the stopper on it and I, and I put it away in my bag. Like, all right. You 
I'm drunk and I'm ready. Let's go. All right. Well, let's go while he's feeling it. Really, All right. There is no need to be concerned. You should have a straight shot back to the tavern. That's what they told us when we went here from the farm. <laughs> also a good point. Let's go. <clears throat> well, um, Woodrick, or Wedrick leads you um, back into this cavern, which opens up into um, a network of tunnels. And uh, he strikes a torch and says, Bill, very quiet. The dead are listening. And everybody, please make a stealth check. I passed by our trace. And <laughs> please. There was, I heard it be quiet, and I was like, yeah, no. Oh. <clears throat> Okay. That's going to grant everybody a huge bonus or Another plus 10, 10. Plus yeah, 10 so I... to everybody, including Wardrick. Right on. So I, with that, I got a 32. Don't worry, guys. I'm at disadvantage. It's all good. I'll, I'll balance it out. I got a 20. I got a 35. And? Hey, I'm I'm in a twenty-eight, and Woodrick got a twenty-one. He whispers back to you. In the dead silence, he says, "These are our brothers and sisters. We would not fight them." I thought you said to be quiet. Yes, you said it was safer quiet. down here. Why are you talking? Shh. Hey, guys, be quiet. What? Shh. I thought you said it was safe down here. What'd you say, Eric? I didn't hear you. Yes, the ghosts are above us now. Okay. And, Who's talking? Wedrick uh, <laughs> leads you into this, uh, into this mine shaft. That uh, there's a junction before you that splits off in several directions. One looks like it goes to um, like a warehouse storage room of sorts. The others go off in various directions there are uh pools of water the mine here is warm and uh what drug says hot springs as he points to the pools okay and he will lead you forward um he beckons over his shoulder for you to stay close and will you all please make for me a second um, a second stealth trek here, moving through the uh, second part of the mine. Oh, Wedrick's being careful to walk along the planks that are available. Still got that sweet, sweet plus 10. It's going to be an 18 for me. That's going to be a 22 for me. And 24 for me. And 31 from Wedrick. He um, is moving along, looking back at the group of you, and he points um, down a railway. Just down there, uh, over the pass, about 100, 100 yards or so, stay on the main rail. It'll take you right underneath the tavern. There's a well. You just take the well up. Are you coming with us? No, I need to get on my route here. This is as far as I go. Okay, try not to die. So it's the straight shot. Mm. Sorry, the straight shot. Uh, <laughs> yes, but be very quiet. The streets are above us. They're slanting or sloping now, but... Bertrick, you got this cool magic for another 50 minutes or so. Well, good luck. Thank you, my friend. And, no problem. Um, if you guys would please just pull yourselves out onto this uh, map on Rule 20 that we're looking at here, uh, this yeah. uh, network of rails about in the center. Yeah, right about where Silverado pulled himself out. would be perfect. All right, guys. Let's split up and find the way out. Is there, is no, there, is there light? Up, is, just straight ahead. Is there light right split now? Split up, okay. Is there light? 
Wedrug had uh, been using his a torch to light the way, so as he leaves, so does whatever light source you all were all right. following. Okay. Are you going to light cantrip on your hammer again? You know what? I was actually going to do... Um, it's I'm going to cast cantrip. a continual flame on it. I'll uh, shoot. Will I do it on my on my hammer? All right. It's gonna last a while. Can can I? Sorry, am I able to dismiss that until this? I think it's till dismissed, right? Does that have verbal components? Oh, for sure it does. Will you make for me a stealth check, please? Plus ten, but not at disadvantage because you're speaking. Hmm. Maybe that's not. You know what? Actually, let, let, maybe it's a bit smarter to let let uh let Vincent use his. Because my I'm not sure if I can dispel dispel it. It's permanent. Ah, uh, okay. You certainly would have known that before casting it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I know it's still dispel, but I thought it was dismissed. And mine. Mine does. My cantrip does. My light cantrip does have verbal components. So do I need to roll for that? It to has what on? I'm sorry. It. <clears throat> the light cantrip does have a uh, verbal. Oh. Material components. Please, yeah. Do please I need roll to self check. If you're trying to be quiet, yes. Okay. Seven. 14. So, well, 24. We still have Pass Without Trace on. That was your previous stealth check, but I'm sure it's okay. 17. So, 27. All those other things I just said. (laughs) Numbers, you know. (laughs) Yeah. High numbers, high numbers. God, you guys really needed me, huh? Again, stay in school, kids. So you guys are moving hard, quietly guys. through the mine shaft here, uh, aided greatly by Silverado's magical energy. We're heading this down this path. Is that right? Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to be moving left across here. So you guys came oh, from the right. Yeah, kind of. Uh, oh, curve. Mark cool. Here. All right. We're going this way. Yeah, you guys kind of came from back here, uh, journeyed up to the junction, and then are mm-hmm. following this main uh, main rail straight ahead. And he says to just follow the. He had said to follow the rail. So, um, as Move you move forward, forward um, and a- approach uh, this chasm, uh, you begin to hear uh, something moving along the stones and a faint hissing. Can you all make perception checks for me, please? Sweet. And yeah. Eric, you can move as far as Silverado and Vincent are, and then if you guys will hold up there, please. I got a 14 perception. I've got a... Sorry, I ran a roll twice there. 13 perception. Yeah, mine's 13. Okay. Uh, well, you are approaching this chasm, and you hear uh, the sound of something being drugged across a stone, and then also the uh, a faint clicking. And... Um, you hear this noise coming from within the cavern before you. You see this, you know, 10 foot wide stretch of rail cart and passageway uh, that goes over the chasm here. Um, the chasm is about uh, 60 feet deep. I stop the guys before they move any further because I heard a clicking noise and I don't like that. And I take my bead off and I whisper a message into it. So only they can hear. So no sound comes through. I, I, this is just a totally random guess, but I think that whatever that was ahead needs sound to hear and can only hear through sound. And I got something to do to take that away. But everything else is going to hear it. Should I do it if I need to? And I pass the bead to those other two, uh, Vincent and Eric. Basically, um, I can deafen the creature, but everything else will know. And again, this is a message that your friends alone can hear by putting yeah. this beat up to their ear. Yeah. I kind of get this look on my face like I'm doing really hard math, and then I just respond, no. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll just look at him and shake my head, no. I don't have to, I don't have to say no. <laughs> I know. I, I give a thumbs up. And I... I will cast message to Silverado and say maybe only in the most dire of 
circumstances. Keep it in your back pocket, but you know, let's not open with that. Hey, ghost. Do as you say. Don't kill me. <laughs> and then I go, woo! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Careful, boys. Careful. All right. I motion the boys to start moving on ahead. So as you um, move across here, um, Silverado, mm -hmm. you notice snakes at your feet. And they're just coming up along this ledge. Uh, suddenly, there are several of them. And um, they seem to be uh, intent on you. Uh, perhaps they heard you walk across the bridge or were nearby waiting for something to eat. Uh, will, will you please roll initiative? I don't even get a stealth check. You've made a lot of stealth checks, my friend. Okay. There is the initiative. It is a 20. Not that, but... Well, so oh, yeah. get. We all roll in or just help? Yes, yeah, everybody please roll initiative. Huh? Four. You know, I never got to kick a snake before, but I'm going to find out right now. Two. Damn. <laughs> hmm. Heard me. Uh oh. We got danger noodles ahead. <clears throat> nope, don't like that. And Silverado, as you are moving very quietly across this bridge, uh, the snakes just seem to notice you as you have uh, moved um, all the way across. Let me see here. I'm sorry. I need to select the right things. Oh, turn order. Turn order? What is that madness? It shows us the turn order. We don't use it from? ever, but... I don't even know what that is. It tracks the turn order <laughs> and tells, tells you who's gone. How'd you get that to pop up? I don't know. It was just <laughs> there. It's like a magic feature. The ghost of rule twenty. Um, it's just yeah, it's just something I haven't done yet. I should, maybe I should do that. I don't know. Oh. Does it beat the notebook? Handy dandy. I, do, I don't. I don't know. It's just there. I don't know how to get rid of it. I don't know what happened. How about that? I guess it just stays there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to place this snake, which represents a swarm of snakes. And Silverado, of course, you've been very quiet, and they've just noticed you as uh, you've passed. Uh, like, so please feel free to act. Uh, however, they do seem to have noticed you just as you've uh, moved past and uh, they're aware of you and appear hungry. Can I? Is that a chasm right there? That's right behind him? Yes. Yes. Uh, where Eric is standing, he's like on the bridge crossing the chasm. Yep. Okay. Um, I would like to push the snakes. Into the chasm. See how that goes. Now, I don't, I haven't done anything like that before. Or it's just a shove. And I'm trying to look up the rules for, oh, there it is. Shoving. Using an attack action, you can make a special melee attack to shove a creature. Either knock it prone or push it away from you. Uh, if you're able to make a multiple attacks, this attack replaces one of them. Uh, strengths athletics check contested by the target strengths or a so. Okay. I make an athletics, and they make an athletics or dexterity check. So it's like an opposed grapple check, but you're trying to shove this swarm off yeah. the ledge here. So you can either use strength or dex, but I'm using. Um, I have to use athletics. A four. Twenty. 
Uh, I as get you beaten. shove in the uh, swarm of snakes just engulfs your arms. Okay. I tried being nice. I use my other attack action to go slap them with the stick. With the uh, heart stopper. What, a 26 hit? Yes. All right. I do 11 bludgeoning damage to him. And then with my offhand, I just punch the snake again with my I just punch it with my fist a 26 hits I don't know why am I getting such high rolls on snakes <laughs> five damage so you got something against uh, dra uh serpents now or um serpent adjacent yeah. I'll add that to the list of grudges I I suppose that's all I can do oh uh, and actually so We'll have you gain an extra. You'll have a bonus action as you'll have um, the benefit of surprise on most of this swarm. Okay, so I'll just uh, punch a it again. A bit of finagling here, but yeah, you'll have another action. 18. Hits. For nine damage. Okay. You, you guys are walking along the main cart rail, and you see Silverado just walking by. Look down to his right and try to like kick him off. They, they latch onto his leg, so he starts hitting it with the stick and starts punching his leg with snakes on it. So you're able to punch off about uh, <laughs> half of the swarm here, and it's greatly diminished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. And uh, the snake is going to uh, swarm upon you and uh, bite at you. I can feel it entering my veins. 12 is not going to hit. No, sir. Okay. Um, so, as you're battling this uh, swarm of snakes, you see um, perhaps 20 feet below underneath this uh, crane mechanism here uh, what appears to be just a giant scorpion and it turns its head and clicks in your direction, then begins scurrying up the wall and um vincent you're up in this episode you cannot see this thing neither can eric only silverado this episode i get eaten by uh, insects and animals so all, all i'm seeing going on right now are, are the snakes yes yeah, just that swarm of snakes that silverado's battling <clears throat> okay so then i'm gonna keep doing what I, I was originally planning on doing i wouldn't change my plans right away i'm, I'm gonna step around uh eric right there where I can kind of get well I don't know if that's quite on the fireball underground yeah and drop a fireball no <laughs> <laughs> well when um, you I'm there, going you to do see the scorpion uh, below here okay and it's 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 scurrying up the wall towards us yes okay that might change my plans then um Well, we still need to get these snakes out of the way so that we don't have to deal with that. So I am going to They're on my leg, remember? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean down and, and, and just kind of brush my hand across and I'm going to cast poison spray. My leg starts melting. <laughs> as long as your leg doesn't inhale. <gasps> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna focus I'm gonna i I'm standing next to Silverado, so I should be able to get at at an angle where I'm where I'm Getting it at least on, on, on most of the snakes and not on him. The only thing that's fine is my magic boots. This yeah. has liquid. Just steam it. it. That's <laughs> fine. There's just like a foot of this bridge before you, a foot or two. So you can uh, yeah. see down there. It's a very large swarm. Okay, so they gotta they have to make a con save. Mr. Snakes. Oops. Spooky zero. snakes. I meant to have zero as my mod. Uh, 16... 16 still saves. Okay. My, my AC is a 15, so never mind. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, well, now that, now that I've seen that, that there, once I do that spray, I'm, I'm then going to take a, a couple steps back this way. Okay. 
and I'll uh, I'll end my turn there. We start spraying poison at me, and so I'm shooing my leg away. Like, what are you doing? And let me just uh, update the stream here. Can I have everybody's uh, hit point totals, please? Yeah. We'll start with Eric. Sixty-six. Sixty-six. What are? How am I going to take you out? All right. <laughs> no worry. Oh, I'm sure you'll find a way. Silverado. Sixty-nine. Sixty-nine. Nice. Like actually. And you guys love me in the dust. What do you? Uh, I I accidentally 55. rolled. And actually, I didn't mean to roll, but I did it by accident. So I. <laughs> Kept it. Well, 69 is a lot better than zero Silverado. Yeah, yeah. It's like 10, maybe 20 more points than I had in last level. Oh. I, I bumped uh, up. It makes sense that you guys would catch up. Now that I've gone into Sorcerer, I'm only getting D6s. So. Congratulations. <laughs> So just to sum up what's happening in the battle here, um, as you venture deeper into the mine, you've crossed this bridge and Silverado, you've been attacked by the swarm of snakes. snakes. And then engaging with them, you and Vincent have noticed this giant scorpion crawling ac across the cavern walls uh, beneath the crane here. Uh, and that is going to bring us to Eric. Can I get around to the other side of the Silverado here? I'm trying to figure out how, if I can actually yeah, move that far. You can actually do that, no problem. I get over here. Yep. All right. I got a I got a pick in my right hand and I got a hammer in my left hand. I'm gonna plant them in, in this swarm of snakes. Right. Let's see it. <laughs> Two grown men bludgeon and stab snakes with picks. All right. Here I come in with a can opener. This, is, this seems seems so so uh, different from fighting a dragon. <laughs> Grandiose fight too. Oh, nice. and it's a crit. Oh, and he crits it. Crits against a snake. Nice. So as I plant, as I plant my warp back in, sparks fly. It goes vicious. It's gonna be. What's that? It's, uh, that's sixteen plus seven. Six. Yeah, does the vicious does an extra seven damage. Oh, okay. Well, the rest of the swarm is uh, dispatched by the can opener. Your war pick. Totally. Totally. Nice. Uh here, throw your magical hammer at that scorpion. No. Scorpion, scorpion. And about uh, and then, half so of right. the snakes are gone. You do see some still down over the ledge, uh swarming their way up, and you have now noticed the very large uh scorpion across the way. And it's kinda it's got it's gotta climb up to us, is that right? It will need to get to you still, yes. All right. So with that, I I don't nothing else I can really attack at the moment. So I might just take a. How far did I move there? I might take a step back to about here. Step back a, a bit with my buddy Vincent. And then. And end. Do we need to wait and fight this thing, or should we just carry on? I mean, is it, gonna, I mean, is it coming for us? Are we faster than a scorpion? Well, you are, I'm sure. I am. Are you guys faster than a scorpion? Probably not one that size. Silverado, it is your turn, so it's going to be your call here. All right. Uh, I take my two. I take, let's see. I have darts, which I don't use very often, but I imagine they're like throw, more of like throwing knives than they are. Um, like actual darts because it looks cooler. So I imagine I just take out two knives out and I just fling them at the scorpion. Okay. Oh, we got it's, crits it's all crit. around tonight. Nice. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, I imagine the crit hits for eight damage. I don't know if the eight hits. Eight is not going to do it, my friend. I figured. So there, so I just I just throw a knife at it. The other one bounces off, and I just uh I go over to the snakes on the side, and I uh, start punching at them as best I can, even though they're over at the side of the edge. Okay. 
So I just try to do a, a heel kick to one of them. A 25. Hits. For 7 damage. And that, and then that will be my turn. Having a hard time getting a, a clean shot off on these. Uh, oops, let's see. On this swarm of snakes, um, the giant scorpion scurries up the wall quickly, and um, just as quickly, it's on top of the bridge, and it moves directly towards you, Silverado. All right, he's a big one. And the uh, scorpion's claws uh, come crashing through the air as Oof. it tries to attack you. Will 16 hit your AC? Ah, uh, good question. I I have to look real quick. Uh, no, it does not. Okay. Um, it leans down suddenly, lowering its head right to your feet, and its tail comes arching out over its back. I like to do the, the a big lean back. And then it stands again and attacks you once again with its claw as the tail misses. I like to imagine I jump over the claw. Will an 18 hit? Uh, 18 will hit, yes. As you try to jump, it grabs your leg um, and just ah. crushes it somewhat and then also grabs you and you'll be grappled oh. as you take 10 damage. All right. What? And the swarm of snakes uh, comes upon Help. you, Silverado. I'm being eaten alive. Help. Will 13 hit? Uh, oh, no. he'll have advantage because you're grappled? Is that, Is that right? Well, sure, that's what? Right. I got you the, will not yeah. be able to these snakes are having a tr hard time getting you as you uh, wriggle around in the claws of this scorpion I I can't move basically I'm stuck there but I'm not prone or I'm not uh... yeah essentially if he's grappling it means he can't move that's right yeah I'm just stuck I want it to be so much more <laughs> I know it seems like it should be, but Vincent, you are up. Okay. <clears throat> well, Vincent is going to step back over here just to sort of get out of the way. I am going to cast a second level spell and I'm going to use my first meta magic trick and I'm going to it's a second level spell so I'll be spending two sorcery points to cast twin cast it as a twin spell which uh, means when I attack cast a spell uh, targets only one creature and doesn't have a range of self I can spend the number of sorcery points equals to the level to target a second creature with the same spell and I am going to cast enlarge on Eric and Silverado. What? What? Okay. What? <laughs> oh. what does that so, do? It sounds awesome. Um, it, it absolutely is. Um, <laughs> you, uh, let's see here. Uh, the target size doubles in all dimensions and its weight is multiplied by eight. The growth cool. increases its size by one category from medium to large, for example. Um, if there isn't enough room, how, how tall are the walls or the ceilings where we're at? Uh, about uh, 8 to 12 feet in various spots. Uh, Ooh, actually, so right high. here where you guys are, it's actually uh, very high up because of this chasm. Great. Okay, so you'll double in size and, and, and height. Um, nice. You weigh your... Um, let's see. Uh, until the spell ends, Targo has advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. The target's weapons also grow to match its new size. And while these new weapons are enlarged, the target's attacks with them deal an extra 1d4 damage. Cool. 
So I just turn you both into massive hulking creatures. <laughs> and that I brings hate... us to Eric. Oh, nice. Uh, with my newfound vigor, I'm going to get in here next to my buddy Silverado if I can. Can I fit here? Sure. And I'm coming in full bore on the on the giant scorpion. You've grown to match its size. Now let's see uh, how your attack oh. does. So the the advantage on strength checks that doesn't mean it that doesn't include attacks. It's just like strike, it's like checks and saves, like right? breaking down a wall. Just checks and saves. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, but, well, you, but you do get an extra D4 on any any D4 any damage weapon attacks. Yeah. Cool. I'll take that for sure. So I'm coming in with my can open. I'm gonna open this thing a new one. First hit, 21. Is that hit? Nice. For uh, 12 plus uh, an extra, so 15. Sorry, I have a I have a a hot a hot link for the the bonus from a bless. So I just use that to die for. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, uh, First, that was my first attack. Second attack, same thing with my can opener. Come on. Oh, 22 to hit. Hits. It's gonna be another. This is it's a good 14. Seven, 17 damage total. All right. All right. And then I kind of come in and try and plant Oblivion right across its face. Oh, just missed a crit. 28 is going to hit, though. Nice. For 13. The other fifth, another fifteen bludgeoning damage. Oh, my max on damage there. Slain. Boom. Oh, I thought that was going to be a lot harder. Yeah, that, that was, was awesome. Now, I wasted wasted my good trick. <laughs> fifteen. I'm big. I thought that was cool though. You drew it to match the size of that scorpion, and then just. Uh, Put it down. <laughs> I was gonna wrestle him. I was gonna wrestle a scorpion. It's forty-seven damage. Nice. Um, while I'm up here, I'm gonna have a look around and see if there's anything cool I can see that I may not have been able to see for when I was shorter. Oh yeah. What's that in the did? I can see a little bit farther. Um, spell only sure. for a minute, so make it quick. Yeah, yeah that's I'm, what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm not sure that's how a vision works at all, but I'm not sure making you taller makes you see farther. Well, in some case, you can't see. You got a range you can see at, all right? I, I double, right? I went from I went from six feet point. to twelve feet. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, How you, often do you get to be double your height? You got to take advantage. Well, anytime now because of Vincent. Are you uh, are you hurt? By the way, bud, are you um Silverado. <laughs> I you hurt? Nah, I'm just a scratch. Okay. It's flesh wound. All right. Well, the caverns here are uh, plenty tall to accommodate your new height, but around you is mostly uh, different, very networks of caves that are much shorter. So um, I think the spell lasts most a of what you guys are able to see from here. Um, he said to go straight, though, but now I'm seeing more than one option. Uh, we don't deviate from the path that was given to us. We keep moving. Yeah, but I mean, I've seen there's like a the pathway this way, and then there's a pathway this way. And as you're stopping to um, consider this and discuss, um, you hear the murmur of conversation. At first, you think perhaps it's your echo, but then no, you recognize you hear the voices of others. Can we walk into Dunlop's Tavern? It's huge. No, but I think we. I. I go, I'm worrying that's ghosts are coming. A ghost party that we're. For creeping up on. Man, I can get used to this size. Well, uh, so which, uh, are we go, do we go this way or this way, guys? Main rail. We we'll keep going down. Follow the main rail. All right. Yep. Let's keep on trekking. Hey, Vincent, you want you want to be on my shoulders? <laughs> uh, the spell's probably actually about to wear off. Honestly. There you go. <laughs> what? Ooh. And as ooh. I'm climbing up, <laughs> quietly ahead or. Um... How are we yeah. going about this? Quietly. Quietly. Yeah, try to anyway. I'm assuming any voices are the dead. <laughs> good assumption. Good assumption. Will you guys please make stealth checks? You still got Natural that plus 20. 10. We still have a plus 10? Okay, so... Yeah, it lasts for an hour. 
This is out of hand, guys. <laughs> Seriously. I got where a 13. These, where were these Here rolls we go, guys. last week? 29. 13. 13. And I'm a walk-in tin can. Yeah, yeah. Jingle. So, um, as you continue down the dark caverns, um, you follow the rail as you are directed to, but you hear something behind you. Something's following you. Uh, something slithering. Uh, it sounds like the snakes that were crawling out of the canyon, but it's perhaps bigger. Uh, when you stop, it stops, and it's hard to really get a good sense of it and to really hear it. But there's definitely something following you. Let's see. Don't worry, guys. I think I have something for this. Maybe. Should we keep uh, keep moving on? Yes, keep moving on. I don't have anything for this. I lied. Truck on forward. Yeah, we'll just keep moving. And if you guys give me a second, for some reason, my... Um text documents all of my text is like highlighted over and so it's glitching out and okay here we go i apologize let's see i am ready to attack action though my paranoia is going up ever so slightly go scorpion snakes weird snake dragon mostly the dragon Um, uh, now, as you are walking through the mines, uh, it is warm and water drips from the ceiling, the condensation, um, but it is, other than that, uh, deathly quiet, except for the sound that is following you. And when you stop again, you, you just can't seem to hear it. Um, you can't seem to... Uh, it. Put your finger on exactly what it is, but uh, Silverado, going down uh -huh. this dark mine, your worst fears uh, begin to race through your mind, and suddenly um, you are presented with that. And uh, w what is Silverado's worst fear? <laughs> oh, I gotta look at the list. Uh... Already faced death. Is that it? <laughs> Is so, it like gi giants and ogres and let's see. We got big things: dragons, ogres, death, uh, friends dying in front of them. Um, I guess his biggest fear at this point would be death. Yeah, because it's the most recent out of everything. So, would that be something similar to what you experienced after you died? Then is actually what your uh, main fear would be or just like the process of it or something that would be great enough to destroy you? Uh, well, I don't like the inky blackness I was at when I died. Well, please make for me a uh, wisdom saving throw, Silverado. All right, I Captain. I'll see you guys later. About to be possessed. 22. Okay. Better um, than I thought I'd do. Well, as the cave turns pitch black before you, um, you're trembling in fear, but uh, you're able to, to press onward. And Eric, what, what would manifest as your worst fear? That's fine. I was, just, I was, just, I was thinking... And from a philosophical standpoint, Eric's biggest fear would be failure. But I'm not sure how that would manifest into something. Not getting a chaos stone? Letting one fall into the wrong hands, maybe? Yeah. Something like that. Being raw. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Sure. Yeah. I mean, his biggest his biggest fear would just be, you know, not living up to his, you know, birth, his, his goal in life, which is to eventually return home and serve his, his family. But, uh, yeah, how was that? How does that manifest itself into something physical? I'm not sure. 
Hmm, well, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't help at all. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. This is a phantasmal image. So it's some kind of projection of your own fright or um, your own, right. you know, conjurations here. So I expect you to perhaps see yourself failing to come to the aid of your family and uh, either they're slain or your estate is burning to the ground and you're too late to save them. Something of that nature. That makes sense. Yeah, totally. Uh, makes sense. Will you make a wisdom saving throw, please? I hope I make one. I don't know why I rolled that advantage. Sorry. It's a five. Mm. Oh. Well, you I'm going to get hurt real bad. The terror grips you and you realize that you need to go home and tend to this. You're just utterly frightened, um, irreconcilably so. And when it is your turn, you'll need to um, dash away. Okay. And so, trying to get essentially that'll that'll begin happening as you uh, you dash away from this terror before you, turning from the uh, back to the way you came. And then Vincent, you've dealt with a lot of your fears, but what is Vincent's uh, worst fear at this time? It was almost realized, I think. Porcelain dolls. Oh wait, no, that's me. Uh, <laughs> Vincent's worst fear is, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's easy because he's experienced it once before and doesn't want to do it again is having those he cares about uh, uh, slain while he is helpless to assist them. Well, Vincent, as you were walking down the dark uh, mine shaft here, your friends are before you and you sense uh, danger. Will you please make a wisdom saving throw? Come on, 17. Well, you recognize um, some kind of spells being cast on you, uh, making you doubt yourself. And for a moment, you are sure that Eric and Silverado are knocked unconscious before you by a boulder and perhaps slain outright. But no, they're just walking there. They're all right, uh, though very quiet and minding to themselves. Um, and suddenly then... Um, Eric does take off um, running back the other <laughs> direction. The hell. Yes. Can I try to grab him? Uh, I was just going to ask that because he's got to run past both of us. Can we try to stop him? Football, football tackle. Or is he, or is he, is he gone? <laughs> um, you guys, I'll allow you guys to try to uh, try to apprehend him there. No problem. All right. Just, uh, make a grapple check. We'll make it like a DC 12. Uh, okay. Athletics. Athletics. Yeah, athletics. So they're trying to grapple me? Yes. Yeah. Five. Five. Do I, do I need to oppose this? You don't need to. I put a no. DC on it. In no, you do not. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, no. Are you able to make our tokens the normal size again? I don't know how you guys no, did no that. No problem. No problem. So I do have you guys a little bit farther along the mine shaft here that I don't have a map oh, cool. for there exactly, but as this is happening. Cool. So, um, no, unfortunately, you're trying to apprehend Eric, but no, he darts back. And, um, yeah, if you could maybe put him around that bridge area, that would make sense. And then Vincent and Silverado, we can just put, like, you know, have you guys be a little bit off the map, um, ahead of ways. Um, he moved, he dashed, so. Oh, it'd be double, is that double move? Yeah, double move. All right, let's calm down this cowboy. And <laughs> you're gonna run and like jump on my back? <laughs> you just see this. As you guys are running back to uh, stop Eric, who's just running <laughs> away for whatever reason. Um, Man, I gotta go home, dude. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, you run back into uh, the main mine shaft area where the crane was. And will you, Vincent and Silverado, please make uh, perception checks? I will. I got a 11. 10. That's got to be good. All right. As you um, come around the corner, 
you see uh, standing um, on the bridge that crosses the cavern a huge snake-like figure holding um, a giant scimitar and he seems to be uh, trying to just hug the wall of the cavern and stay out of sight but Silverado um, you do actually actually both of you spot him as you run by so when you get to here and uh, we'll just say that's like half of your movement so far yeah. Uh, that would be when you both spot him. Can we take an action? Uh, everybody, please roll initiative. Go. Okay. Oh, load. 13. I'm in, a, I'm in with 8. Uh, 14. Give me a second. Eight. I will update the stream here. I think I did good. Now that we've um, rolled initiative, let's just take a brief break and I'll get the uh, the battle map set up here. We'll be, we'll be yeah. back in just a few minutes. Uh, awesome. and the adventure will continue. Perfect. Sounds good. Oh, there yeah, you are. Welcome back, everybody, to the Heroes Era. And uh, before we took the short break, um, Eric, you witnessed a horrifying visage and fled in terror and your Ooh. friends your brethren tried to stop you from fleeing to no avail and so you're dashing back into these mines uh, madly and Silverado Vincent as you turn the corner you do see this uh, huge looming snake like or a snake figure um, back against the wall here uh waiting for something but you do notice it as you're running and so um oh we did have initiative oh yeah i rolled a 13. i rolled a 14. and an eight from eric when we get the back to dunlop's tavern is are we gonna is dunlop gonna be like I did have a friend named Wedrick. He died a hundred years ago. <laughs> <laughs> if you um, go back. Yeah. He's going to be in a picture in the tavern, you know. From like... That's right. The eyes were Hold it, holding Dunlop back. when he was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Nice. So this creature is nice. backed against the wall. And Silverado, you've Hi. used up um, uh, your movement. I've used up my movement? Yeah. On uh, Eric's turn, he had to move and then move again. And then on... You guys were all at about the same point in the hallway. And so I put you at 10, 20, 30. So perhaps you have like five to 10, maybe five feet more of movement. Let's see. I'll, I'll take that. I need to get within the smacking range. Yeah, you guys can have 10 more feet of movement and then your action. Okay. So let me look at something real quick. Uh, okay, so I will walk up to this man, this big spider, serpent, spider, not yet, serpent man, and uh, take my my good old staff with the heart on it and kind of slice at his neck. A 20? Not that. A 20 will hit. I'll do some damage. Which is 9. And then I will use where is it? 
Not that, not that. That would be very bad. Uh, that's not great because that wouldn't work well. I'll Don't use. Do that one. Wait, wait, not that one. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I'll use. Um, what is it called? Uh, lightning to add five uh, lightning damage to the roll. And I would also do a stunning strike, which. If I remember right, is a 14 con save. A lot of lot of back and forth with this. Yeah, it's a 14 con. Failed. A failed All right. con save. Cool. Darn. Seeing that I I've struck him and shocked him with the lightning. I will go back in for a another good strike at his belly, his soft, soft belly. See if I can hit anything vital. Oh, with advantage. Let me use another one. Uh, 24? 24 hits. 11 does All not. Alright. I will... There's 6 bludgeoning damage, then I will punch him uh, in the same spot I hit him. For... 26, which will hit. That does... Nine bludgeoning damage. I'm going to use another key point to flurry of blows. To punch again. Uh, where is it? There it is. A 22. Which will go for eight bludgeoning damage. Then I'll use my free disengage. Uh, there. My my my. Okay. I was I was hoping that whatever spell he cast on him was a concentration. Yeah, I was gonna say, does he have to make a con check for all of those attacks? For, for all those hits I landed. Let me look that up. He's not gonna make these. Is he? No no. 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 You got an eight you feel the grasp of the spell uh, dissipate. What? Nice. Did I do it? Vince, you mean it's not on fire? <laughs> What's on fire? Um, my parents' estate. <laughs> well, I was gonna stack up a whole crazy thing, but I think Silverado already put a pretty good hurt on this guy, so I'll just stick with an Eldritch Blast and reserve my resources for now. <laughs> So, 27 to hit. Hits. For 8 force damage. Don't forget the advantage. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let me roll for that one more time just to see if it was a crit. That no. Was not. Okay. So, the second one at advantage is a dirty 20. Will hit. That's another eight points of force damage. Nice. Now I need to account for my uh, creature having magic resistance against your sun um, <laughs> stunning strike, Silverado. I apologize, I did not do that, but I want to make sure I do that so you guys don't just defeat me outright here. <laughs> So we'll see if he makes this would be no, he will still not make it, so. so So was it just a spooky monster you had and this is a happy thing that came with it? Or did you intentionally look for something like this? Does this look super happy? I'm just saying it's a happy accident that your spooky monster has magic resistance. Oh. I, don't, <laughs> I, I I don't know if that oh, was intentional goodness. or not. That's what I'm getting at. Mm. Jeez, I'm hurt right here. <laughs> Look, I haven't used Stunning Strike in a bit, all right? so. Well, I hope that uh, it's successful next time. And then we have Eric. Nice. Now that I've uh, kind of come back to, I'm going to get back into it. 
I can get to here, which is what I will do. Move in. Was that right, was that right there? Is that right? That might have been too. It might be too far. Oh, okay. And then, um, when I get, uh, I'll get within about twenty-five feet of him. I'm gonna hit him with a sacred flame. Uh, where's my so? Uh, DC thirteen deck save, or he takes seven radiant damage. Oh. Will Take not yours. make the save, so seven damage. Seven radiant damage. Nice. And uh, with that, I'll draw my weapons and get ready. Go ham. See if I need to. Uh, I mean, uh, my my buddy Silverado may have them under control, but we'll see. Uh, well, the snake-like abomination looming before you raises its scimitar as if um, getting ready to strike or to charge but then quickly slithers away. Um, you can see it's still behind the but corner it, here. But it's stunned, isn't it? Till the end of my next turn? I had uh, magic resistance, so I had advantage on that saving throw. That's what we were talking about, I thought, a second ago. Yeah, you didn't when make you, it, though. My second one didn't make it? No. You rolled like, a 10. Oh, I'm sorry. I was like, <clears throat> dang, just trying to get away with things here. <laughs> sorry, guys. You're good. Uh, another battle lost. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so then, okay, I apologize. It's your turn then, Silverado. All right. And he is stunned. I saddle on up to the feller. I take my... My bat staff out. I aim up the shot and go for the head. Let's see. Will a 25 hit? 25 will hit. Or, uh, let's see, that's seven bludgeoning. I will then do it again. And I go for the other side of his face this time. For 27 to hit, which would be a 11 bludgeoning damage. And then I will unarmed strike, punch him in the nose. For 18, will 18 hit? 18 will hit. <clears throat> for 7 bludgeoning. Then I will do flurry of blows. For another uh, unarmed strike, a uh, crit. Oh. For uh, what is that? Thirteen bludgeoning damage, and I will do stunning strike number one. So a con fourteen. Starting to get upset over here. <laughs> a one? All right. A one. Perfect. You said you had advantage, though, right? You do have advantage. She's got, like, a resistance or something? Yes, he Thank does. You. 16. All right. Then we'll go with stunning strike number two. So make two more. Oh, he, he gets it anyway. Yeah. Okay, stunning strike number three. Can you, do you not have to do it after you hit him though? How many? Um... It when you hit him, you can hit. You can do stunning strike. Right. I hit, I hit him four times, so I'm doing it four times. But you didn't do it after the first two hits. You're correct. I haven't seen any wording that says no to that. I'll look at it again. Is it just a matter of how we're ordering it, or um, would it just... Be, um... Let me look. Or yeah, I suppose being that he was already stunned till the end of your round anyway, like on this particular turn, I don't I don't guess it would really 
make a difference. When you hit another creature with a melee weapon attack, you can spend one key point to attempt a stunning strike. It doesn't say you have to do it immediately after. Mm. Yeah, Although, if you want me to... At the same time, but it's all good. We'll just <clears throat> do right. it this way this time. Okay, I will remember that for the future. But I will do that last uh, stunning strike. Killing me here. I like taking turns with my monsters. Don't worry. You, you cut me off this time. And for the rest, whenever I use this ability... Um, so do I have more rolls to make here for a, a, yet another t um, attempt? Two more rolls, and that'll be my last one. Okay. I can't do it again. 16. All right. I guess you can play. <laughs> <laughs> well. All right. That's up to you guys. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> Vincent <laughs> is up, so. Okay. Uh, pew, pew. Let's go for it. Just, oh, he is no longer stunned, right? No. Let me turn. Let me, let me turn advantage off. Sorry. Uh, so that first one's an eleven to hit. Miss. Okay. Oh, sorry. Wrong thing. Ignore that. Next one is a natural one. One. Miss. Yeah. Um. I'm going to use my. Bonus action on this round to um, I'm going to expend a, a second level spell slot to um, get my two sorcery points back. I can do that as a bonus action. So I'm just going to exchange that spell slot for the, the points and then that'll be my turn. I didn't know you could do that as a sorcerer. Eric, you're up. Looks like I can't really get in there. My, uh, there's not a lot of space there, is there? So I am in front. In the yeah. middle of like a five foot cavern. Um, hmm. Uh, could dart with up that, beside then beside him and fight, and then step back. I suppose. No, it's okay. Squeezing then. No, I think okay. he can uh... be in my square. He just can't end in my square. I think. Yeah, but he, he can pass through, but he would have to stop to to yeah. take an action. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'll, uh... Hmm, actually. Is that a, um... Hmm. They're on, like, a, on like a bridge there. Yes. Can I... Just wondering if I can charge in there and push this thing off of the ledge. Sounds cool. Um, Let's try that. That sounds like fun. So, yeah. you can be in my space when you attack, but you have to not be in my space at the end of your turn. And being in my s space will... Oh, okay. Right, and this would be basically me forcing myself into its space, right? I guess, yeah, if you push it. Yeah, I mean, it It says that if you're squeezing through, then, you, you know, you'll be at disadvantage on your attack and dex saving throws, and then attacks against you will have advantage. I'm just going to Sacred Flame it. I'll uh, let Phil Silverado finish, uh, finish what he started. Okay, yeah, otherwise I picture you're trying to, like, get past him yeah. in the middle of combat in these close quarters, and so... I could That's see right. That it could could, it could end badly for me. Now, if you were halfling, I think that doesn't happen. That's right. Yeah, you're right. I should have cast reduce. Oh. <laughs> so he's got a DC 13 deck save, or he takes four <laughs> radiant damage. Don't worry. He's gonna Ooh, he's gonna save. <laughs> uh oh, we yeah. got the uh, warlock throwing some shade here on the damage. On the damage roll. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that was no, that was bad. Roll your second one. Yeah, roll, roll your second save, um, Ben. Oh, you I'm got sorry. a bit of advantage, guys. Okay. Was... <laughs> don't, don't worry. 
We want happy. Hey, hey. Oh, the one and the two. Twice oh. as good. The four points. Four points. Take that and smoke it. <laughs> New catchphrase. Don't feel bad. We were playing. We were playing in our game, my home game, the other day. My wife, who was playing a cleric, cast inflict wounds, uh, rolled her damage three d ten, and she rolled three ones. Oh, you slapped nice. the creature. She, I love it. Uh, uh. She got up and stormed away, and they were at level like level two. So that was her big, you know, doing this thing. Yeah, her big, her big, uh, big finisher, and she did three points of damage. <laughs> She still gets mad about it, but if I bring it up. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and uh, with that, I might just take a couple of steps in. You want me to make... I can make space for you if you want to come on in and have some fun. No, it's okay. You're doing good, man. Well... No, don't worry. <laughs> I'll just I'll just jump over this giant crevasse yes, and fall to my mean. death. And the snake rears back. It is the snake's turn now, right, Eric? It is the snake's turn, yep. I need to get the push maneuver. I'll be next. And raises its uh, huge scimitar here and swings it at you, Silverado. Oh, no. A 12 will not do it. Oh, but sir. he is a deft swordsman and swings yet again. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you are quicker still than his sword, but he has yet another strike to attempt. Oh, no. Wow. I'm jumping over his first sword, <laughs> ducking over it. Oh, man. The, the other uh, one. I'm just so worried for the next fights coming up that we're just going to get destroyed because I, I dodged the, the side for the last out. one. Full cartoon. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. The, People uh, listening, uh, the DM is just is not rolling well right now, and I'm really afraid of it. <laughs> the snake yeah. hisses angrily and uh, shouts something in a strange language that you don't understand. <laughs> And its oh. voice echoes down the hallway. There's not an off chance that it was celestial, was it? <laughs> you didn't know. I know, I know it was else not, speak yeah. any <laughs> wacky languages. Uh, let's see. I got just, dwarvish just and elvish. Dwarvish. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't dwarvish. Uh, this is a weird lizard man. He speaks dwarvish. Weird. <laughs> Silverado, you're up. This large Come here. snake creature is looming before you, shouting here, angrily Hulk. behind it. I, I, I go up to him, and after dodging all three of his swords, I kind of do a what's a cool move to do? I stick my uh, staff into. Is there a wall here? Yes, right there. there are walls on either side of you. All right. I'll stick my staff into oh. one side of the wall and use it to go kick him as a staff attack. Okay. Which will be, and I'm not at advanced, right? I'm not. Okay, cool. For a natural one, which is a nine. Miss. I'm too short, so I can't reach him. So I take my, my uh, staff out and I just go to poke him with the heart end. See what happens. Nice. 13. Miss. All right. I go to punch him. Well. No. I will use a key point to do patient defense and use the dodge action. I'll stay where I am. Well, actually, yeah, I'll stay where I am. Nice. Sorry, Eric. It's all good, man. Vincent, you're up. Hey. Shoot this man. I'm going to... Actually, I guess I need to step over here a little bit. I didn't realize that was a wall. So I'll probably need to be a little more over here so that I can see him. Um... Just in case this guy decides he wants to run off, I'm going to cast Ray of Frost. Because that'll slow him down if he tries to leave. Okay. So. 
That is a 21 to hit. Hits. Okay. So that will be 11 points of cold damage. And also, um, his speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of my next turn. Okay. Then we have Eric. Um, I'm going to Sigurd Flame it again. Burn him. Really Shoot him. Kill him. Fire nice. Uh, 10 radiant damage, DC 13 deck saved. There, he saved. That's he, better. He's good. He saved. He's done it, everybody. No 10 damage this time. <laughs> Eric. And I'll stay put right there. That's all for me. Uh, Silverado, before you, this uh, large snake-like abomination uh, suddenly begins to change form and um, the large scimitar clanks to the ground and uh, this thing turns into an actual snake about um, spooky can I ask can I ask a question really quick yes please um, is it does it seem that he is casting a spell to do this or is he anamorphing? I don't. I do not think this is a uh, a spell. Okay. I think this never is mind. More of a uh, an innate ability. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Continue. No. No worries. That's a good question. Um. So, it uh, becomes another form, and that is a large snake that begins to uh, try to slither away. Uh, quickly. I'll punch it. You can try to punch it. Please do. Come back here, boy. 23. 23 hits it. My last key point. Stun and strike. Here we go. No. Does he still have it in snake form? I don't know. Killing me here. All right, well. Okay. He, he wins. Right Successfully saves. All right. Oh. Uh, as you attempt to slow this thing with your uh, magical energy, it slithers away and around the corner, going deeper into the mine. And as you look after it, you see two other large snakes joining it quickly. And they <clears throat> go down the passageway to your right and deeper into the mine. Okay, guys, group decision time. Do we follow the snakes into the mine where we don't know where we're going or stay on the path? Let's stay the course. Get back to Dunlop's Tavern. They seem to be really eager to prevent us from going that way, so let them run away and let's uh, let's move forward. I think that's a good let's idea. Let's let him know he has an infestation problem. Yeah. Before um, we do it, though, I'm going to use my belt to uh, get some key points back. Cool. The belt of okay. emerald... Mastery? Yes, it's basically uh, it's a jade well, not jade but emerald belt that I have it gives me key points kind of like a short rest would when I'm out of key points I do it once a day, once per dawn technically and I imagine it's just a belt that I have like a good bottle of good liquor tied to so that's oh, me yeah. just regaining my key is like oh hey I can do magic stuff again. <laughs> How uh, it's okay. so there's there's walls on either side of this right here in this wall right where we are. Yes. And is there a ceiling there too? You want to collapse it? Yes. Yeah. Totally and, do. And um, so where the snakes disappeared was up here. Cool. Okay. Well, if you want to collapse it, my friend, I have something. Or, or just is, for is you. this right? Is this right here? That's collapsible. That's like a. Is that like a wood, like a stone bridge right there? Um, I picture this map. Um, I'm not sure, but like these things that look like they may be rivers of some sort are deep chasms, and then right on. Um, the platform that most of, that um, Eric and Vincent are on right now, I picture that having like an opening that goes stretches upward. 
like a part of the chasm, like you're almost on a shelf, and then the chasm oh, yeah, okay. continues downward more. And so where Silverado is, he's under like this wall that um, ascends upward to the surface, and uh, it's about ten, you know, ten foot passageway that's seven to eight, seven to ten feet tall, um, five feet wide, you know, ten feet long there. So, so I have a. Uh, are you going to use your hammer to collapse this thing? That was my plan. I have a bomb that I've been holding on to forever. Oh, wow. We still have that. <laughs> yeah, I could toss it and then... Go to the battle scene, too, so the, the viewers can see what we're talking about here. This <laughs> now, before we do anything, two, two obvious uh, problems with, the, with either plan. One, Eric is in a heavy plate, and I don't know how he's going to get all the way up there to the roof to collapse it. I'm in chain mail, dude. I'm not in any heavy plate. Sorry, chain mail still. It's okay. So the part under which you're standing here, Silverado, it has walls on either side. So, like, there's a pillar here and a yeah. pillar on the other side of you, and then, it, you know, it's about 8 to 12 feet above you. I can do the good old Mario wall jump where I keep going back and forth until I get to the top and... I don't know, hit it with a hammer or a plant a bomb. But if I do the bomb, it's a bomb underground. But can we not just destroy? Like, is this not like a bridge? We can do and, destroy and the And this bridge, chasm yeah. is underneath, so we just need to destroy this wooden walkway. Do we not? Is it I'm held sure up? That'll slow them down, at least. Is it held up by ropes, or is it like un wood underneath? It's a haphazardly cool. made uh, wooden uh, like gangplank. Uh, with different planks uh, nailed across it. Oh, well, then I just uh, look for nails and take out my crowbar and just start taking off nails and, and wood planks and start undoing it all. Hmm. Okay. You, uh, Sounds a lot quieter than blowing anything up. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it actually does. It's gonna be it's gonna be the recurring theme for for me and my bombs is that they they can be useful but they never get used. <laughs> right. I'm also just point of order. I'm gonna use my pearl of power to regain a second level spell slot. I uh, so, Rada, what do you do with these planks as you pry them off? Oh, I put them in the bag of holding, of course. You think I'm not gonna take <laughs> planks with me? Okay, you have a fence worth of uh, planks. Oh yeah. Okay. Give me that. And uh, now what do you all decide to do? Let's carry on. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. Back this way. You continue down the uh, the cavern, and it uh, stretches on for about 100 yards, just uh, oh, as your dwarven friend had suggested it would. And you come to a well. Uh, this well is deep, but it also has a staircase spiraling around um, the perimeter of it. Uh, so this is, of course, the well that uh, <clears throat> your dwarven guide had advised you to, uh, you know, would lead you to Dunlop's Tavern. And we're supposed to go up this, right? Yep. All right, let's do it. We're not going down into the abyss. Not yet. That's and later on. You leave the hot air of the mines behind you and whatever uh, treachery these snakes were up to, uh, you also leave behind you as the sound of uh, a piano playing a jubilant tune, um, but without the accompaniment of the merriment of a crowd, uh, this noise begins to reach your ears as you ascend the uh, spiral staircase carved into the stone of this well. And, uh, of course, before you is the wooden door of what can only be the basement of Dunlop's Tavern. And for tonight, we'll end the adventure there. And then next week, we will continue and uh, see what is in store for the heroes. Right. Happy Ooh. Halloween. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, spooky. <laughs>